you get plenty of coverage of Oklahoma State football. You think you hear all the noise coming from Gallagher Iba Arena when you get your Cowboy basketball news. But you don't. You just don't get it, do you? You don't. And there's a couple of Jordans here to fix just that. This is the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast. This could be a podcast. Anyone with a computer can make one. Here are your hosts, Jordan Keene and Jordan Bishop. That's right. Welcome into the Triple Play Sports Production Studios. Jordan King with Jordan Bishop, and this is the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast. And thank you so much for joining us again. Stick around. You're going to want to. It's a good, great interview this week. Uh, kind of had some scheduling. Uh, it was kind of a bad week to try to fit in a, a women's basketball player with the week that they had. And uh, we'll get into women's basketball coming up here. Um, but it gave us a good opportunity with Media Day being yesterday for the spring sports, that being, well, spring sports, I say, softball and baseball. Um, and they had a good opportunity to catch up with uh, one of the top 50 players per a watch list, uh, you know, kind of whatever. But uh, she, Maddie Sue Montgomery from the softball team, second baseman, set a record last year with 15 home runs, program record, and uh, so she she joined us. Thanks to her for that, and you'll hear that coming up here. But uh, that was a good interview. Yeah, she's one of the uh, the big seniors in this squad that has high expectations. They talked about yesterday making to the World Series in, in June, and uh, she's gonna be one of the main people behind that. You know, she started at second base the past three years. She's uh, entrenched there in the middle infield and. She was a really good interview for us. Yeah, so we'll we will get to that a little bit later on, not too long into this podcast. Um, but I uh, want to start off as we always do, and, and pretty soon we're going to have uh, more rankings or more standings to go through because uh, softball will be starting up. So uh, you know, I would assume these podcasts will start getting a little bit longer, but uh, we'll try to keep. We aren't going to keep you here for two hours. We don't have that kind of time either. So uh, we'll start here though with women's basketball standings in the Big Twelve. Baylor. 20 and 1 in their 10 and 0 in conference. I'll just go through the conference records because outside of OU, um, conference record overall record. Now OU is they're by far and away the worst overall record in the conference, and uh, you know their conference record almost reflects that as well. They're 1 and 8 in the conference. They're number nine, and Texas Tech at the bottom one or one. Oklahoma 1 and 8, hopefully 1 and 9 after tomorrow, and then Texas Tech 1 and 9. Going back down though from the top, number 2 is Can- uh, Texas 8 and 3, Iowa State 7 and 3, 7 and 3 is West Virginia, TCU 6 and 4, K State 4 and 6, and then OSU comes in at 3 and 6. Ever since we talked about that week where they would have a chance to potentially get up to third, it's been a, I don't know what the word is, but it's been disappointing for, for Coach Littell's bunch. Yeah, they won that game against Kansas and Lawrence. We thought that maybe had been a turning point. They hadn't won there in two years. Go up to 3-2, and two, and then they've lost four straight. Um, and we thought that that might have been the case if you lose to Iowa State, which they did. And they lose to Baylor, which they played a close game, game but they did. And then they had, you know, you think a winnable game against TCU. I know TCU is, you know, up there in the top half of the Big 12 right now and they have a pretty good record, but OC beat them here. They, they should have beat them down there. Didn't happen. Now you have lost four straight games, and you have to have a must-win tomorrow uh, against one of the worst teams defensively in the entire country in Oklahoma. Yeah, and in the post, you know, postseason is probably not a super reasonable expectation for this group anymore. But if it is, if it is, this is a must-win. This is as must-win as it gets. This is absolutely must-win. When people say, "Well, it's not necessarily must-win unless you're going to win the Big Twelve Women's Tournament," this is a must-win. You're not getting in if you lose this game. There is no way outside of winning the Big 12 tournament of getting in postseason play. So it's on the table now. You can't lose to a team that's 5-15 and 15 and still get in uh, if you're going to be one of those mediocre teams. So uh, it'll be an interesting interesting thing. If you win, though, this is probably in some ways the best, in some ways the worst time to take on Oklahoma because, one, OU sees, wow, if there's one team that's playing as poorly as us, it's either Texas Tech or OSU right now. And uh, so it's a good time for them to to sort of face uh, OSU, but at the same time, if you're OSU, what better way than a a team that has five wins on the year, has struggled defensively, given up 100 points? I mean, you know, if if you can see it from both sides, I'm going to take the optimistic side and say it's a perfect time to be playing OU and get some things fixed. Yeah, yeah, and and definitely, like we mentioned, postseason, probably not in the picture unless you do the the Big 12 tournament, but you have still a chance. Yeah, first First nine games, three and six, but you still have nine more games to go. So 
get this. You have some e- winnable games here later in the half. They have a kind of the easier half other than going to Baylor, which is going to be tough, um, but and going to Ames, of course. But I, I really do think that this is going to be Wednesday night going to be a big night for them. Um, I know it's an 8 o'clock tip. It's going to be really late, but it's national TV, so you can't argue with them. But you'd hope that they win this game and that gets them some momentum going. Yeah, and again, if they go 6-3 and three down the stretch, you finish 9-9, nine and nine, you're going to be up there at – 18 wins, 19, 20, if you win a couple in the Big 12 tournament, you could conceivably sneak in. But again, you need to win this one that is number one. I want to talk about the marquee matchup that was last night, though. Number one, Baylor goes to Austin and takes on, takes down the number 12, Texas Longhorn, 74 to 68. This was a 21-ish point lead for Baylor at one point. I think it was two minutes left in the third quarter. So it wasn't early in the game. I mean, it, you know, it was kind of blowout time down in, down there in Austin and uh credit to uh, to Danny Williams, uh Shug Sutton and the Longhorns. Williams hit she went on an 8-0 run herself, hit a couple really really contested threes. Baylor, you know, not much else they could do defensively and then uh, she got a drive to the hole because uh Texas finally figured out if you pump fake when Lauren Cox is guarding you, she's going to fly by you. She goes for the block every single time, and uh, Lauren Cox finishes with 10 points and 14 boards, the only double-double on the day. Um, but I thought Texas's fight was was really great. Um, it's not that Baylor is unbeatable. We saw that last night. But, I mean, you get Kalani Brown and Lauren Cox to combine for 25 points, you're feeling pretty good. And then someone like Moon Ersing comes in off the bench and scores 20 points. Uh, that's kind of like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, you play so well against some of these other players. Uh, Juicy Landrum didn't didn't have double figures. She wasn't in double figures. You, you feel like at the basis you did a really good job and then someone comes in off the bench and drops 20 and that's just the nature of the beast that is the Baylor Bears yeah because everyone on their bench is at least top five recruits uh so they're not in just scrubs you're putting in there and, and I didn't get the chance to watch this I was doing softball stuff but you're telling me about how close it was and I think that Oklahoma State kind of put the book book out on Baylor on how, on how to at least keep it close and you might have a chance to beat them and I think there's gonna be some tough uh, draws against you know Iowa State later on, uh, and, and some of these other teams. Texas Tech they beat by sixty, but that's Texas Tech. So I think that Baylor's gonna be getting a bit more. They might actually suffer a loss in the Big Twelve, which I thought was previously unheard of. They might actually do that this year because of what OSU and Jim Motel did, and kind of show the weaknesses of the Bears a bit. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see once it comes tournament time. This is a Baylor Bears team that in the recent history has kind of underperformed come March. So it will be interesting to see if uh, Coach Mulkey, and obviously she's a legend for a reason and a future Hall of Famer for a reason, uh, you would think she'd be able to turn it back around. But uh, it's yet to be seen, and it's it's a big, big deal. So I wanted to touch on some of the other games coming up tomorrow night uh, since we uh, we will be sending this out tonight on a Tuesday. Tomorrow night, Wednesday, February 6th, Kansas State heads to Kansas, TCU at Texas Tech, and then OU at Oklahoma State. This is kind of some interesting in-state rivalries going on, if, if you will, and, and then you add on Baylor and Texas, Te- uh, Baylor and Texas, kind of a, a rivalry week, it, it, so to speak, in the, uh, in the conference. Bedlam happening tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, the other two at 7 o'clock. So it's you know, going to be interesting to see how this shakes out. Kansas State, Kansas at Kansas, that could that could end up being a little bit of a coin toss there. Yeah, yeah, Kansas State, and, and I know uh, whenever OSU lost up there in Manhattan, we threw in there it was a bad loss, and they are 4-6 and six in conference, but they're sh- shaking out to be a decent team, so I think they can get this win in Lawrence. And then TCU Tech, and like we mentioned TCU early on, I thought it was a winnable game, but they're still 6-4 and four in conference. They're wanting to make it to the tournament. They wanted to make it last year and were right in the bubble and didn't get in. I think they do make a run. I think Coach Peebley does get the Horn Frogs into the tournament this year. It's a really talented team, and as soon as they came in here, I said, man, I think that's an L down there in in – in Fort Worth, and unfortunately, it was. Um, I, you know, I don't want. I wasn't predict. You know, I didn't didn't want that to happen necessarily. But I just, when they came up here, played a really good game here in GIA, and just came up on the short end of the stick a little bit. Um, I thought that was going to be a really dangerous matchup. So there you go. There's the Big Twelve schedule going into the weekend, and uh, all looking up at Baylor. I don't think anyone's going to catch them this year. It's pretty inconceivable to think that they're going to lose three games the rest of the way. They just have eight games left. All right, we're going to uh, we're going to head over to the Cowgirl Complex, whatever their 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 
Center Center of Operations. And uh, coming up next, after this short little break, you're going to hear our interview with Maddie Sue Montgomery, the senior softball second baseman and power hitter. And power is understatement for her uh, of the Oklahoma State Cowgirls. And we're going to talk a little softball coming up next. Welcome back into the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast. Jordan King and Jordan Bishop with you. We are now at the Center for the uh, Cowgirl Softball team and joined now by Maddie Sue Montgomery and uh, one of the just announced as one of the top 50 on the watch list kind of preseason for the USA softball player of the year when you hear that um, what's the first thing that comes to mind Um, I mean it's exciting I guess but um, I'm trying to focus on the team I'm not really worried about myself I think if our team does what we're supposed to do then awards will come for each and every one of us I think Um, but just trying to stick with like team mindset and just keeping it about the team is kind of where I'm at now. Yeah, we heard a lot today during media day this morning about the chemistry this team has off the field, and it is a team mindset. And just what have you seen this year from off the field, the kind of camaraderie that you have with the girls? Um, I mean, when we leave here, we're still hanging out, and I think that's a good sign. I mean, the teams that are ready to get out of here and ready to go do their own thing, I don't think they really – have what they want on the field so whenever we have that off the field it's easy to carry onto the field where everyone gets along you have each other's back and you know that whether you're on the field or off the field um a lot you know you lose a uh, a big leader from last year to this year in Vanessa Shippey and a lot has been made you know maybe nationally about that when you think about that and, and some of the accolades preseason accolades you've gotten does that some motivation for you to step into that role in some way um, I mean I guess so, yeah. Um, I learned a lot from Vanessa, so I think I just try to take in the information that she has told me and continues to tell me and just try to use that um, with the team that we have now. Um, obviously, we're a lot different. We have a lot new, a lot more new pe- people and some people returning and whatnot. So if I have questions, I'll ask her and that kind of stuff. But just trying to use things that she has taught me has helped me out a lot, I think. Is that still a, a, an open conversation oh, with yeah. you and her still? I mean, absolutely. I mean, we don't talk every day or anything like that. But, like, when she saw that that came out, she reached out to me and was just like, congratulations, Mm -hmm. which is a big deal to me because she didn't have to do that. I mean, she's got a lot on her plate. She's a coach Mm -hmm. now, you know. She didn't have to do that at all. She's married. But her reaching out was nice, very nice for her. I'm probably going to see her in Stillwater coming up here for the uh, the invitational that you guys have, Syracuse coming down. Uh, how exciting is that to, you know, not that it's been forever, but he still yeah. gets here. Uh, I mean, I think it's going to be a little weird at first. <laughs> You're going to see her <laughs> right. over there, you know, coaching against us, and she's going to want to win, I'm sure. So uh, it's going to be a little weird at first, but we're always going to welcome her here. So, and, and just looking at this, you mentioned that you got learned a lot from her. Now that you're in that senior role, what are you trying to, you know, make your own, be your own kind of leader? What, what, are you, what do you learn from her that you can use there for that? Um, Coach, she talks to us about, um, talks to us a lot about um, coaching the younger players to take your job, and then it'll reward you in the end. And I think that's kind of resonated to me a lot and just trying to help our younger players. I want them to be better than I am for sure because then that just means our program's going to keep getting better and better each year. So I'm just trying to teach them everything that I know that they can that can help them in the long run, and then hopefully it just continues to get passed down and passed down, and hopefully it's more information each time. Overall, um, you know, I'm sure you know you're you're a, a team player and everything like that. But some individual records that you've already set, and uh, what are you looking to do this year as far as offensive production? Maybe not not from like a leadership standpoint, but from a play standpoint. Where, where do you want to improve your game? Um, I just want to knock in runs. I mean, the players in front of me are going to do their job to get on base, and we know that. And so I'm just going to try to knock him, knock him in, and get myself on bat on the bag so as well, so the people behind me can knock me in and just start passing the bat just through the whole lineup all the way up and down. We're pretty solid. So overall, you look at the the schedule coming into this season, and you know this program, Coach Gajewski is not afraid to challenge you and he's going to continue to do that and obviously the Big 12 is is a tough conference as well so when you look at the schedule is it a daunting task or is it is it a great opportunity I think it's exciting um, it lets you be able to tell where you're at um, early in the season what you need to improve on you can take things that you've learned from those games to help you out later on when the crucial games are coming you know and getting those under your belt is always um, going to help you out in the long run so I think it's more exciting for sure um we're not going to go out scared of anybody. We're going to beat whoever's on the other side. We don't care what's on their chest or who they are. We're going to play the other team, and we're going to beat them. So. Beginning the season Friday, playing and going into Houston tournament. You got Houston, Illinois the first game, first day. 
What are you excited about finally that the long off season's over? You don't have to be playing against yourselves anymore. You actually get another team to play against. That's a, f a very exciting. We're ready to face some other pitchers. I'm sure our pitchers are ready for us to face <laughs> other people too, and vice versa. Um, I wanted to see our pitchers do well against other hitters, and just our hitters just show what we've been working with the whole time, and just um, to succeed, obviously, but just kind of just to see where we're at compared to someone else other than just ourselves. You mentioned the pitchers. How tough are they? You've, you've faced them now for quite a while now. Yeah, I mean, they just keep getting better. It's like each time you're like, Ugh, you got that pitch now? Like, where did that come from? Or, gosh, that was a really good pitch, good spot, you know? And <laughs> you just let them know that because you're, they're your teammates, and you're like, keep doing that because that was tough. Um, but they're just making strides every day, and it's really cool to see. I know you're dealing with that nagging shoulder most of the end of last year. Now that you're 100%, just how nice does it actually go up to the plate and not to worry about that in the back of your mind? You can just go ahead and play your game and hit the ball. Yeah, it's kind of cool to just <laughs> not worry about it, I <laughs> yeah. guess. Uh, the swing and misses were the worst last year, so I was trying to cut those down, which helps me now, I guess. But um, it's nice just not having anything to worry about. I'm going out there having fun, enjoying my last year. I can't believe it's my last year, but going and enjoying it with my teammates is what I'm here to do. So, you're, You mentioned it's your last year and, and uh, you know very successful career here. When you think back to your recruitment and choosing Oklahoma State and where that – program was that you decided to come to and where you're leaving the program how do you see where it was where it's going and what your role in that was obviously when I got recruited it was for the other coaches um so that was a huge learning curve I think um going into something that you had no idea what was what it was going to be obviously we knew where coach G was coming from he was coming from a good background but we knew nothing about him and um we had a girl come up to us that was committed to Florida at the time and was like you have no idea how lucky you are to get who you're about to get and um Hearing that was a good sign, so we were like, okay, um, we might be okay. And when I say we, Taylor and I, because we were on the same uh, travel ball team. But um, and then I think uh, each year we just gotten better and making strides, and that's what we're here to do. And Taylor and I wanted to just come to a program where we could make a difference and just um, make the program better, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. And I think we've done that, but we're not done yet. What I do you think this? That outside of this year going into this year what trajectory is this program on and uh you know where's it headed um we kind of have the slogan of the final eight and that's our goal and we want to be there and at the world series and um i mean florida state was the eighth seed and they won the world series so we want to get there because we know no matter what you're going to be facing good teams and you're a good team when you're there and we're going to go there to win it you know you're, you've been friends with taylor for a long time and seeing what she's going through and she's still going to play on that torn ACL and how inspiring is that as a teammate obviously as a friend to see her continue to go out that for you guys and to lay it all on the line well that's always been kind of who she is she wants to go out there and win and um she she said a lot that this team she wanted to do it for this team and I think um like we talked about our chemistry earlier like that tells a lot about who we have this year uh her not wanting to sit out and wait it out she wants to win with this team because that's what we're going to do this year mentioned the final eight and obviously coach G's gone out today he did it he's he's been going around all off season saying no matter it doesn't matter that you're ranked 23rd or whatever it is in the rankings that he knows that you're a team that's going to make it to Oklahoma City and down there and what's that mean that he has that faith and confidence in you guys that he knows that you are a team that can be in the World Series and and can win it I think it means a lot. It's not just your coach telling you something. I mean, he's been there before, so he knows what it takes, and he's uh, knows what it takes to win it. And so I think having him and having that background and him to uh, mentor us through that uh, that stage is big. So he won't go in there not really knowing what's going on. He's known, he's been there, and he can help us and coach us and lead us to that and help us out. So A lot of, I think, you know, for me, I think for – any student, you get back in the spring semester and everyone's ready for the, the weather to get a little bit nicer. Um, but, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of students have to stick in class and stuff like that. When the weather starts to get nice, what's the itch like to get out there and, and play softball again? Oh, it's great. Um, we kind of been joking around we're tired of the cold, but we know it's <laughs> going to be here for a while. Um, it's always nice to play when it's warm, though. Um, you feel like you're at your best. And whenever it starts getting warmer, you know it's getting towards the good, the good time of the year. Um, so I think we're excited for that to come around. Oh, like playing outside more than than just hitting the cages. And oh yeah, inside. you get the field, you get all that good stuff. So, so you see the 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 dirt on the pants. What is the the work ethic of this team? Uh, you know, because I think there's a lot of a lot of places you could go where practice doesn't quite mean as much. What what 
from someone that wouldn't know anything about this program um, and came and watched this team practice, what would they learn? Um, that we're going hard in everything that we do. We're sliding. Um, yeah, we're going to get cut up, but who cares? It happens in the game, so you got to learn to play with like, a little cut on your butt or your uh, leg or whatever and just keep going. <laughs> and um, I think that they'll just see how tough we are, how close we are. Um, also, I think just like how – little things matter to us um every little thing matters to us like we're going to talk a lot and if we don't we're going to run and it's just gonna, it's just a tough mindset we're just going to get through it you've been slotted in at second base for a long time and what are you kind of seeing from the rest of the infield and you know people behind you like coach mentioned that coach the players up behind you so they can replace you so what are you seeing from the depth wise at second base and the rest of the infield um, well, we got Maddie Loman hurt a little bit. Um, she's coming back, obviously, but uh, she had surgery. So she was um, the first person that was behind me, but um, they moved her to the outfield and stuff. But uh, just trying to help Shy out. They kind of bring Shy in, um, kind of bringing athletes in there. So mm -hmm. I think we have a really good uh, team with a bunch of different athletes that can play wherever. You move Kylie over there if we have to. We can put anybody there. We have uh, so many athletic people. Um, so I think – more instead of just coaching up at second base more coaching kind of the entire field and letting them know make sure they understand what's going on at each spot because you never know what's going to happen and you got to play at uh, whatever, posi whatever position uh, gives you the opportunity because if they're like hey you want to play second i'll be like heck yeah like put me out there so just trying to help the younger kids understand the whole entire game i think you talk about how well or how hard this team practices how hard they play um away from outside of like hard working because i think a lot of people would say that um what do you want the identity and what do you think the identity of this team is going to be at the plate is it a power team is it uh or or is this a team that's very versatile and can can do it in different ways um hmm. i would say we're pretty powerful um I think we're going to surprise some people. I don't think uh, people are going to expect that right out of the box. Um, but I think once they see their playing, they're going to be like, okay, wow, like if we're squaring up balls, they're going out. Uh, like that's just – if we square them up, like they're going. Um, we don't have a lot of kids that just try to get the ball through the infield. But we also have a lot of speed, so we're going to drop bunts down. We're going to get uh, steal some base hits, steal some bases. Um, so it's going to be pretty exciting. You know, uh, a lot has been made of – the, the slogans this team has had, and we see the one over here, the get to is more than have to. And, and it, Taylor was telling me this morning that y'all are here the entire summer and that you get to do that. You don't have to do that. And that's kind of the whole slogan is that you get to do these things, you get to enjoy these things. It's not something that you're forced to do. What can you say about the, the mindset of this team and that slogan this year? Right. Um, we try to look at it as a positive because if you go in there saying, oh, I have to go run at 6 a.m. or, oh, I have to stay here in the summer. Like, no, I get to start and build those friendships in the summer. And then I get to go to 6 a.m. and we get to kill the run. So that way we sh can show off our hard work and to bring it into the spring and our bodies are looking good and all that. And we're ready to go. I mean, if you go into something saying, you, oh, you have to do this, it's not going to you're not going to get the result that you want to get out of it. So. Was that what we saw on Twitter? You know, a lot of a lot of you were posting on Twitter about your your off season workouts and being in the gym and killing workouts. Is that that kind of what the the mindset we were seeing? Yes, um, Coach D gave us an Instagram challenge type <laughs> thing. It may have been to see if we were doing work over the break, but um, I mean, if we didn't see somebody doing it, we were letting them know, like, hey, you get to work out over the break. Most uh, kids are like. I want to be in your spot, want to be working out to go play in the spring. So know that you get to do that. Now you have to do that. You guys just won like the best dress, like this program did. What's it like, like, what's it like when you, you get to go out there and, and everyone thinks your jerseys are awesome? Hey, they say, if you look good, you play good, right? So I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's, we'll take it. Uh, no, um, it's cool. Uh, we love our uniforms. We love everybody that donates to us and gives us the opportunity to be the best dressed team on the field and if you're the best dressed everyone's looking at you so you got to play well then speaking of donations you had the the banquet uh this last weekend holly Rowe came to town and was a keynote speaker what what was her message and what was it like getting to meet her and, and what she's done for female athletics um she gave a lot of messages out um but I think she kind of talked to us before practice and was trying to see what our team was like. And we talked about the standard and uh, the cowgirl way here and kind of how we did things. And she was like, if you make the moment big where you are, then people are going to want to come watch you. And um, then you'll be ready for the big moments. And I think that's something that we're going to take. Like, we're no one really expects us to be as good as we're going to be. 
And so we're going to go out there and make the moment big. And so people will be like, oh, oh okay, Oklahoma State's here, and they're good. <laughs> like, they're good. So I think that's what we're going to stick with. You finished second last year in the conference, and then this year they pick you to finish middle of the pack again. I know that's going to be playing into that underdog mindset. But obviously at the top you still got Oklahoma. Have won against them in eight years. Do you think this is the year – you got two games here at Calgary State that you finally can knock off the Sooners. I think so. Um, I mean, we respect them, obviously. they're mm. What they do is good, obviously, or they wouldn't be ranked number one, right? <laughs> um, but, I mean, they are good. They play the game right. Um, but I think we can beat them this year. We got a lot of different talents. We got speed. We got power. Like I was saying earlier, our defense is really good. We got new pitching. We got same pitching that's better now. So I think that we could definitely do it. Off, off the, uh, off the field, off the diamond. Uh, what, what do you like to do? What is, uh, what's the day like? Off season. What do you like to do outside of school? Outside of softball? Um, I like to do pretty much anything. <laughs> no, uh, I like to hunt. Um, I like to go hunting for sure. Uh, I like to just kind of relax, though. To be honest, um, I try not to do too much because then like my body gets tired. But have fun, enjoy the moment, enjoy where you are. Um, if I'm sitting at home not doing anything, I'll get bored. So I try to keep myself a little bit busy, but um, definitely have fun. We try to hang out as a team a lot. So whether it's going to shoot some hoops at the court or just playing paintball like we did, um, just anything kind of fun. We just try to keep it relaxed. Who's the best all-around athlete? Like any sport, doesn't matter. They're the they're on average the best at all. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'm trying to look at everyone's faces so I don't forget somebody. Uh, I would say I haven't seen Kylie play a lot of sports, uh, but I I would say she's got to be pretty well, uh, pretty good. Uh, seeing her out on the field, the way she moves and stuff like that. Or, and Sid's pretty good too. So one of them for Last sure. Last time you played pickup hoops, like who's the leading scorer? Oh, do you remember Sid or Michelle? I can't remember which one, but they both played in high school, so. <laughs> unfair advantage <laughs> what's your what's your favorite hunting season do you have a particular one that you like oh i like deer and i like duck hunting so um they're kind of around the same time i guess so i'd say that what's the the most points you got on a buck have you got one on the, on the upper again any records down well, there in well when i was younger i didn't get to go a lot <laughs> so um i shot one in uh, oklahoma last year i think it was like an eight point or something mm-hmm. so i think that's where i'm sitting you know, and last year I know there's a, there was kind of a, a interesting story from you on your your eating habits. Uh, <laughs> just can you kind of just tell the people kind of what you you eat? So kind of what's kind of what your your the teammates call you picky. Okay. So. <laughs> well, for game days for sure, I try to keep it the same. Um, I'm very superstitious, so I try to keep it uh, the same. But I like plain stuff, uh, <laughs> like chick. I like pretty much any kind of meat, like chicken, shrimp, fish. Um, steak hamburger like i'll eat meat pork and stuff like that but like vegetables i'd say like green beans (laughs) um and asparagus and maybe a little bit of broccoli Eh, i'm not a big fan and then like mashed potato i like mashed potatoes um that's pretty Do do you eat your steak with ketchup no, not if it's if it's good. No, I, I hope it's good enough that I don't have to. <laughs> no, I try not to. I, I don't. But chicken and other stuff, yes. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is still the only one who does it. So. Unbelievable. <laughs> who, do you have a favorite NFL team? Um, I feel like I gotta say the Cowboys, but I'm not gonna say I'm like a diehard fan. But um, if they're doing well, I'm watching them. That's for sure. I had to ask since he brings up Patrick Mahomes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite baseball team? Ooh, um, I did back in the day because I watched it a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a Michael Young fan when oh, I was yeah. little, so Texas Rangers. Obviously, I'm from Texas and that kind of area. But um, now I just kind of like to watch them all, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't think I have a favorite. Uh, there's so many good players. I just try to watch them all, and that's kind. I don't really have a favorite, I don't think. Did you have a favorite uh baseball player you mentioned michael young do you have a favorite current baseball player did you have a favorite uh like a usa national team softball player growing up or would you have any inspirations on that side um honestly i mean you got to give credit to Derek jeter i've always kind of liked him kept up with him but um softball wise not really but that's just because it's not obviously televised as Mm -hmm. much and that kind of stuff or it wasn't at the time um when i was younger but um, I like Natasha Watley and Caitlin Lowe. 
Um, I'm obviously not like either one of those, so I don't really know <laughs> why, <laughs> but uh, they were good. So, Is that exciting, though, with how some of these women's sports are starting to gain some notoriety? You guys have some televised games this year. How exciting is that to be part of that? Um, it's really exciting. I think it's something that's been trying to uh, happen for a long time. So being able to kind of see that transition is nice. Um, I think a lot of people like watching softball, so it's good to see them finally getting on TV more. So, Whenever you guys do come back here for that Invitational, Mazzino Invitational, what's going to be kind of the feeling, because this is your last year, of just walking out there for the – Last time for the first game, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try not to think about that. Uh, I don't want it to end, to be honest with you. I'm not ready for softball to be in, to end. I've been playing since I was four. So that's kind of crazy to me. But um, I'm going to enjoy it for sure. I can tell you that. And I'm going to tell my teammates if I – hopefully I don't do this. But if I'm not enjoying it, to look at me and, like, enjoy your moment. <laughs> like, enjoy it. It's your last time. So I'm just going to try to take it all in, soak it all up as much as I can. Do you have any plans for what you want to do next? Um, I'm going to stick around for grad school. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to hopefully do fifth year and stick around here and help them out and that kind of stuff. So I don't want to leave yet, like I said. So. <laughs> <laughs> do you what, what's the, uh, do you have a career? Like what's the, what's the, I'm leaning towards, plan? I want to coach. I okay. told you how I give lessons earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to coach. So I'm trying to get some experience under that with being in grad school at the same time. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm leaning to. So I love softball. No. All right. Well, so. thank you so much for taking a few minutes. We really appreciate it. And uh, for Jordan Bishop, I'm Jordan King, and we'll be uh, be right back to finish up the podcast on the other side. Thanks again to uh, Maddie Sue Montgomery for joining us in that uh, in that interview. Really good interview, and she uh, she is not like Patrick Mahomes. She doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't either. Catch it with steak, and then it's like a true text instead. Not like Patrick Mahomes. So, <laughs> yeah, well, she's absolutely right. I yeah. mean, if it's cooked, if it's cooked well enough, if it's actual, st- you know, it, you shouldn't have to. So uh, she make, makes a good point. That was a that was a fun interview. That we, all, we've had, you know, I don't think we've had a dud yet. I, you know, we've been pretty lucky so far. Uh, the pressure's on for our future guests. So uh, I know coming up here, we're trying to, you know, we'll we'll keep it up with the women's basketball, but. Uh, Softball probably gonna be tough. They're on the road for the early part of the season, avoiding the. Uh, I'm using air quotes here. Cold Oklahoma weather. People, I, I always laugh when people say it's cold down here, but uh, that's just the nature of the beast. I'm from Wisconsin, so um, that's all part of it. But I want to get into the opening weekend here. They're down in Houston for the Houston Invitational, and uh, when when you see their their first five games, a couple of them against Illinois, one on Friday and then one on Saturday afternoon, and then Sam Houston State and Houston, and then Kentucky, a ranked, a ranked Kentucky team. We talked about, uh, I believe it was last week, about the uh, the good teams that are in the SEC, and those are the teams that you kind of want to you know test yourself against. That's where Coach Gajewski comes from, the SEC country. And uh, what, what when you see this, what kind of was your first reaction when you saw how these teams kind of shook out uh, on the, the opening weekend of the schedule? Yeah, I was talking to Sam Shaw yesterday, the new tra- transfer from Texas A&M, and she holds a lot of records down there in Aggieland. And she was saying that she knows a lot of these teams. She's played against them, obviously, Kentucky, uh, being in the SEC. And uh, I think, you know, it's it's a good first test. You know, you get your, your heavy hitters next week when you go to Florida. But this is a nice intro. Uh, it's kind of like what they – the past couple of years they go to Arizona. They had a, a pretty nice play thing. They played Arizona State and Oregon, some of those teams. This is kind of what you get into in this too, and plus it's close to home. And I, I do think, though, that uh, if, if OSU goes through this without at least going 4-1 and one or 5-0, and oh, it's going to be underwhelming because based on the way that they talk about this team so far. So speak about that a little bit. You were, you know, Coach kaiski has been confident. I, it's what you want from your manager. I, I'm going to be honest. It's, I don't want someone coming in here. I don't want a coach coming in saying, you know what, I'm, I'm shooting for ten wins, or you know what, I want to make the tournament. I want to, I want to get it. I want someone that's going to say, look, we have the talent here. I'm going to believe in myself. I'm going to bet on myself, and I think we should be down there in the final four. I think we should be in the final eight. I think we should be at the world series. That's what I want to hear. But that's, uh, that's definitely the, he's, he's not pulling any punches when it comes to touting this team. And uh, like you said, we're going to learn a little bit. It's, it's a great chance. Mm-hmm. You get number 13 on Sunday. If you're four and oh, you can put down a marker and say, you know what, we're here, we're here to stay. And we're the second best team or the best team in the big 12. 
Yeah, and you definitely move up in the national rankings beating a team like that, possibly in the top 15 if you if you do that and start 5-0. and And, yeah, Coach Gajewski talked yesterday about how entering his fourth year, you know, he's learned a lot as a coach. You know, this is his first head coaching job, and he had to do some quality con- quality control a little bit, you know, and, and damage control that first couple of years by just saying, yeah, I want to make the tournament, I want to win some games, you know, but also trying to, I guess, build these kids up. Now they're at a level where he says, you know, they're they're like the Florida team I was at whenever they won the national championship. They have that same type of level. So why aren't we shooting for the World Series? Why are we just settling for regionals? And that's the kind of team that he expects this one to be based on the pitching staff, which has been, you know, hit or miss the past couple of years. But this year he thinks he's got a really good group. And then the hitters have always been there. And he returns lots of them with Matty Sue, obviously, who we talked to, Taylor Lynch, Riley Bayless, Sidney Pennington, and Sam Shaw, who not only can pitch, but can hit it pretty well, too. And she's going to be in the four hole for him. The interesting thing from that interview with Maddie Sue was, uh, you know, I asked her what the identity of this team, she thought what she thought it was going to be, and maybe that's an unfair question. It probably was, um, and a little bit loaded too. But um, I, I asked it anyway, and and I liked her answer. She she did not pull any punches. She said, if we square them up, they're going out. Mm-hmm. And and uh, again, you know, you can view that as cocky. You can view that as arrogant. Is I view it as confidence in your abilities. And she's confident not only in her own abilities. She's confident. She talked about this too, the people behind her and, and sort of the depth that they're building. I think this is going to be a fun team to watch. Yeah, yeah. the only, I think, issues they might run into is we, they have had that confidence, but also in the fall they had a good slate set up, and then two of their premier matchups got canceled because of weather. So you didn't end up getting to play the teams that you wanted to play, so you're just kind of going out there for the tune-up games, if you will. Um, but I think that the way that Kenny's talked about how Taylor looks, how Riley looks, how everybody looks health-wise, also Manny Sue with the shoulder back, like you mentioned, I do think that they start out this pretty well and, and win the every game in this tournament. I, I really do think it's going to happen. It'll be interesting to see. Is there any, you know, I think there's a lot being made of the loss of Vanessa Shippey. She was she got on base at a stupid clip, like a stupid clip. It, it's It's... It's almost unbelievable when you look back and see are you, those are unreal numbers. And uh, losing someone that's going to be on base, you know, Maddie Sue talked about driving in runs. Are there? Do you think that could potentially end up being an issue, or do you think that this coaching staff, Gajewski, is is able to find enough and get enough on base because you know, home runs are fun. Yeah. It's a lot. They're a lot more fun when they're three two and three run home runs rather than when they're single shots and those are the only two hits you get in the game. Yeah, they could be doing some Billy Bean type of stuff by making up for one player by using a whole lot of different role players. But and any time you do lose a two-time player of the year in Vanessa Shippey, it's going to be tough. But I think yesterday the message was, we're not rebuilding, we just reloaded. And I think a lot of people forget uh, because she got hurt so early last year. She never played a home game. It was the first term of the year. Riley Bayless led the NCAA in walks her first year here. First year playing Division One softball. And he told me in the fall, because uh, she had torn her ACL, she's on her back, that she's going to be better than Vanessa getting on base, he expects. And that, and even though she's not as good defensively or all around as Vanessa, just having her to replace, you know, just getting on base, and she's a good base runner as we've seen, then that helps you out a bit. And then obviously having sitting Pennington going over to third base to replace Vanessa there, and the freshman Kylie Naomi, who they're calling Bo Jackson at shortstop, Coach said yesterday, blatant, it's the best left side in the country. So I think that you are replacing it with three players. You're replacing what Vanessa gave you. And, you know, that's part of the reason that the ranking maybe is a little uh, unfair to these cowgirls, maybe a little un- underwhelming for the cowgirls, because you do have some people, some question marks. And uh, this team is confident with how they're filling them. But, uh, you, you know, you can understand that. By the way, the – we aren't rebuilding, we're reloading. That's an Aaron Rodgers quote. I just wanted everyone to know that. Re- remember that, okay? That's the only, uh, that's the only uh, male sports uh, <laughs> reference we're going to make here on the Cowgirls Coverage Podcast. So uh, that's some, some good stuff on the, the Cowgirl t- uh, softball team, and uh, we'll, we'll continue that, obviously, through the, te- through the season. I'm really psyched to, uh, to get this going. And, and, again, already this weekend, uh, we're going to have some softball. So that's fun and uh, really excited for these spring sports. I've talked about that just about exhausted that conversation ita is for the uh, women's tennis team talk about that they're headed out uh, out west and gonna be interesting i think you said tomorrow is when the uh, the matchups are going to be released and uh, what do you ex- what are the expectations for the cowgirls headed out there 
I just hope they're I just hope they're healthy. Um, I think if they're healthy, their expectations can be as high as making it, you know, to the final round. Uh, they played the top probably one of the top five uh, schedules so far this year. I know they're going to drop their number nine in the rankings this week. They're probably going to drop because they've had losses to Arkansas and then also lost to UCLA, which I think uh, Coach Young felt they left it a little bit out there because it was the weirdest match ever on Saturday. Um, Sophia Blanco had back problems uh, leading up to the match. She was leading 4-1 in the second set, and then her back gives out. She loses the second set, can only play a few games in the third set, has to retire forfeit that point to UCLA. Earlier in the match, Marina Glenart went to chase down a ball, stepped on a ball, rolled her ankle, had to retire her match. That's two points he gave up. Plus, it came out a bit flat in doubles, and so you're probably going to lose a doubles point, he said, anyway, but the fact that they showed up the way they did and just kind of just gave up a little bit in the first couple games before they made a bit of a comeback gave UCLA all the all the momentum it needed. So I think that if you're healthy – um, if those two can be able to play this weekend in Seattle, then you have a chance. But other than that, they're just trying to regroup. They're still kind of find, trying to find themselves. We talked about how many new faces they have. They do have a lot of talent, but they're trying to find the perfect mix right now. One of the top recruiting uh, classes in the country, per uh, a couple things I saw on Twitter. So uh, top five, I, I think. Yeah. Um, so uh, obviously a bright future for them. So I did want to mention that. We won't get into it a ton because we – we don't know who they're going to be playing. So it was a little bit of a disappointing weekend last weekend, and especially that Arkansas match. Um, but, you know, you're testing yourself against the best, and, and uh, you're going to take some knocks along the way. So we'll see about that. And then uh, women's golf, they get underway. And, and this was a, this is one thing some people on the afternoon sport, uh, someone on the afternoon sports drive called in um, to Jason and I's show and talked about how this was the most underwhelming women's program that we have. And I think that's maybe a little unfair because, you know, they did just miss out on the nationals by a stroke last year. Now there's a little bit of a collapse, but nonetheless, you know, I think it's a little unfair to say that. Um, what do you think about this team headed into the spring and obviously, uh, tied for, or pardon me, sixth overall here out at the, uh, the Palos Ver or in Palos Verdes. For the Northrop Grumman Regional Challenge, I should have said that a couple times before we started recording this. Yeah, I, I think you know Courtney Jones. I got the meter last year on their way up to, and they got uh, drew for the regional, and they just barely missed out. But uh, of course, they lose a great senior, Emma Bros, who qualified for individuals last year. I would think that she does a great job, and and she does get compared a lot to to the men's program and Alan Bratton. But, hey, the last uh, last person to win a major out of OSU came from the women's program, not the men's, and Pernell Lindbergh. So uh, they they are uh, getting better, um, and she does test them test them against the best in the country. I think what they did yesterday, going up to number six in this in this tournament, is is showing that they're getting talent. I know they have a really good uh, like newcomer, I think a freshman, and uh, who came in. This uh, Camarina came in a month ago, and she's already doing well for him. So, Courtney's recruiting, and I think that if they keep on this on this trajectory, they'll be a team that's gonna make the NCAA tournament and and make you know the the last couple rounds each year. You talk about Camarina and, and the great uh, great round that she had. Let me t let me take you through their their top five golfers here, Jordan. It's pretty pretty awesome. Um, you got you freshman Camarina. Freshman Whitaker, sophomore. Uh, I think it's it's either Bailey or Bai. I'm not really sure because sometimes the uh, over from from that side of the pond, she's from Leicester, England. Um, they they pronounce it differently. She's a freshman as well, and then Chen is a senior. So in this tournament, you have three freshmen and a sophomore, and uh, you're you're sixth place. You're you're competing to a certain extent i know you're not winning the thing and i know you're not really in contention you're 20 shots behind stanford and and a handful of 14 behind ucla but still i mean you're going out there and with a really young team and it looks like from one round one to round two you gained a lot of confidence and these golfers i think you start to give them some reps over here in America, doing some of this stuff because you do have some people, some internationals o over here, and, and that's all part of the learning process for them. And uh, I talked to Coach Bratton last last spring about that with Victor Hovland, and and how much was it trying to acclimate himself? Well, Victor Hovland, that was you know, and, and Coach corrected me. Victor Hovland had been playing internationally his whole life. You know that that was he's been one of the top golfers in his age group 
since he could, you know, began playing golf. So that's a little bit different. And, um, you know, these are obviously highly thought of golfers as well. Um, but that's part of the learning process and the learning curve. And I think once they start to settle in to Stillwater USA and get comfortable with this golf team and then start to grow a little bit, this the trajectory is on, on the right path. And I know we talk about it a lot, but honestly, the draw of Carson Creek as your home course, getting a practice in that will set you up for pretty much anywhere in the country. And Coach Jones is doing a lot of what uh, Coach Young has done. I mean, these quote-unquote country club sports, you have to start building up because the people at the top, the Stanfords, the UCLA's, they've had a, a stranglehold on, the, on these sports for decades. So to break in, it, it, it takes a while. But once you start getting these recruits, like Coach Young is done with tennis, now that we see Coach Jones is done with these great freshmen who are already competing in this tournament and doing well, then you start making a little bit uh, of, a, of a climb. And you, it's, it's piece by piece. I know that people get, gotta get frustrated, but it takes a while to crack into the, the blue bloods. And once you do, you're there for a while. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. I think we're both excited for it. So uh, not much on the, uh, the front of – Cowgirl Soccer, we know their uh, spring schedule. We mentioned that in the last one. Equestrian is going to have some stuff coming up. I know we're, we're looking at potentially getting someone on from them as well. So uh, I think that pretty much covers all the women's sports. We I think we mentioned just about all of them today. So started with basketball. Uh, thanks again to Maddie C. Montgomery for joining us from softball. Talked about softball's opening weekend coming up, and it's a really exciting time in, in women's sports because got a bunch of a uh, bunch of sporting events coming up. And uh, make sure that uh, if you're listening to this, you get out and support them. Um, most notably tomorrow against Bedlam. Uh, uh, against Bedlam. In Bedlam against Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's a exciting time of year because this is the time where obviously basketball is in the second half of the Big 12. You have the postseason coming up. Uh, softball starting up. Tennis has already started up, and there's going to be going outdoors soon, which is, I think, the most exciting part of tennis season is going outdoors. Uh, and and Oz golf has started up, so everything is kind of all at once right now. And it's a great time to be, you know, watching watching these sports and and make sure to watch, you know, some of these players, uh, for, especially for basketball. Vivian Gray is really one of the best players in the in the conference, and I think seeing her. In that second half against TCU is one of the reasons that they made that close game. She really can. She, she really can play. Vivian Gray, Braxton Miller, Sydney Pennington. Um, we talked about these golfers that are going to be good. We talked about a top ten ranked tennis team. You're seeing some of the best athletes in the country in Stillwater. Like I, I don't think it's a stretch to say Vivian Gray has a would have a legitimate uh, gripe to not win Player of the Year any other year. You know, she if it wasn't for Kalani Brown and and uh, Carlton. Carlton up in yeah 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 Carlton up in Iowa State, she I mean she's right there and uh, Braxton Miller if it wasn't for if she didn't play with if you split up Braxton Miller and Vivian Gray who knows what their stat stat line looked like and then you mentioned Sydney Pennington now they're comparing some of their athletes to Bo Jackson out on the softball it's a it's incredible it's really exciting for the uh, the spring seasons to get going uh, for Jordan Bishop. Jordan King, thanks again to Maddie Sue Montgomery for joining us. It's the Cowgirl Coverage Podcast on the Triple Play Sports Podcast Network.